Uh, let's start with the next speaker. Please welcome our next speaker, uh, Ratslaw, who's joining us from Poland. He's an experienced Python developer and works mostly with Django. We'll be talking about the joy of deleting code. Let's start with the talk. Over to you, Raj. So, hello, I am Radek, and I will tell you about the joys of deleting code. So, uh, in this presentation, in this talk, I will first uh, talk about some different thoughts I have about deleting code. I will tell a bit about my story, and then I will focus on the uh, concrete uh, methods that I used and, or that I recommend. So let's start. So why why do you want to, to delete code? Delete um, the code that lives in our repositories, either it is legacy or just developed code. Uh, it might contain in some places the code that is not used. Uh, we don't want this code to bloat our uh, our software, our repo. We just want to get rid of it. Um, so you may ask yourself why? Why, why do you want to delete code? Because less code is less bugs. It's it's as simple as, as, as that, hard to oppose. Um, however, also when you delete code, you also can introduce more bugs on when you, for example, have multiple places when the same code is used and you make a function out of it, you might miss some some things, some, some, some differences, minor differences that will introduce bugs. So we need to be extra careful. And also, especially in Python, uh, that will bite us uh, many times, many places. Uh, sometimes our code is used in, in is referenced. Only it is referenced in YAML files, like defining classes in open API definition, or code that is used by another module, which we doesn't see that it is used. And uh, also the code that is used only in particular environment. And for example, our call code coverage will show us that it is not used, but it is really used, but somewhere else. Uh, it also, it is very easy to fall into this uh, intimidating, uh, intimidating mindset that real programmers delete code. We don't want, this is delete code, um, additional code, unneeded code is not something that we want to have. And we should, part of our professional uh, professionality is to, so, so that we detect and, and delete what we don't need. Uh, however, this statement is as, as true as, as any other statement we can coin. Uh, it only makes us uh, a bit sad, uh, a bit guilty, uh, but it doesn't change anything. Every case is different. And for example, there are, if we have multi, uh, the same code in different uh, layers of the, of the program, we might need to keep it because they have different purposes. If, even if, they, if, they, if they look the same, maybe they will evolve into something other. Also, there is a wet principle that opposes the dry principle, which say write everything twice. Also, all, uh, it is also commonly said in, in, in other words that uh, duplicates start from three. That if you have two duplicates, it's, it's okay. If it's three, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's get, uh, get it out. But also, yeah, there are many, there are many problems. Uh, but also sometimes you just need to speak up uh, because uh, there are projects, especially with legacy code, that uh, you won't understand what the code does. You won't understand how the code, code is used. Uh, the number of WTFs per hour will be very high. Uh, the rotten code, the code where Dragon lives, maybe it would be good to delete it instead of uh, spending months on getting how, how it really works. Uh, so sometimes you just need to do it. Uh, just get rid of uh, unneeded code and whatever happens, happens. Of course, it's very careless, uh, but uh, for example, if you have le a legacy project, no CI, no test coverage, no things that could help you with uh, detecting the possible, possible unused places, uh, you just can sometimes remove something, but check test it on the test instance, not production, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, sometimes it's the only way to see what happens. Uh, 
Also, many people don't like deleting code. They say, oh, we are going to need it, or we are going to need it again, which is the, the worst, because this code was used some time ago. Maybe we will use it in future. It's, it's a trap. Don't, don't go for it. Uh, there's a principle. You ain't going to gonna need it. So you, now you ain't going to need it. Maybe in future you will, but maybe you will, it, you will need it in different form. Or maybe if you are adding a code that will that will be used in future, you are just bloating your work. You are just uh, you will not be able to finish the task in sprint because you added something that you think would be useful. Uh, on the other hand, if something is really going to be needed, and you really know about this, maybe maybe it would be worse to extract it to, it to a separate library or, or module so that you will see that, okay, here are some stuff. We are going to need it, but it lies on the side. So we, are, we, we know that it, it won't, uh, it won't uh, break our test coverage or, or, or something like this. Uh, it, it just lies here and waits for its turn, but I, I don't recommend this maybe another package or something like this, or I don't know. Sometimes there is a situation that, that you have a divine, uh, the divine force is, uh, is uh, you have a revelation how to solve something you don't need to solve now. Maybe just put it in GIST or a file in your file system, not exactly in the repo. Uh, also, Yes, I said a couple of times about the, the legacy code. The legacy code is very difficult case because uh, if we, if you like to comment legacy code, it means you need to delete it. In most modern uh, modern projects, we use uh, something that is called uh, Git <laughs> or other version control system. So nothing is really lost. Uh, the code is somewhere there, and if we'll need it, we'll get it back. Problem is, uh, commented code rots uh, a lot, uh, in a lot uh, more uh, than the usual code that, that's around it. So in the end of all these random thoughts about the think code, uh, you need to just do it, but don't do it carelessly and don't fear too much mm, that, uh, about, the, about the outcomes. In modern projects, we use continuous integration, linters, other tools, and they could help you spotting the possible uh, possible problems, possible bugs, as soon as possible. So you just are going to do it and see how good it feels to delete something and to get your program a bit lighter and a bit more understandable. So a uh, second about my story. <laughs> So I'm, I'm a developer. Uh, I, I worked uh, with Python for 10 years and I changed my job and projects quite often. Also, it's, it's, it's counting uh, along with some side projects. Uh, and uh, half of all my projects contained legacy code. And by legacy code, I mean not something written a month ago, but a year ago or, or five years ago. And six, half, half of the half of projects was in so bad shape, uh, it deserved to be rewritten, but uh, we didn't have time to, to, to do this, or we have, didn't have courage to do this. And that uh, led us to constant refactoring and uh, getting the code better. Uh, there was a project when we refactored it for a year and then even our manager so guys it's leading to nowhere let's rewrite it all and do the smooth uh, smooth uh, pass from the old code to the, to the new so sometimes even people around all the people around you see that you should give up and to rewrite it but you don't see so it's good to have a perspective but uh, suppose we are given a legacy project and we can we need to refactor it, it, it is uh, working, it, it, it needs to be working, we don't have time. So that leads us, the first thing you're thinking of doing in such case is, at least I am thinking, is deleting code because less code is less refactoring. What's, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the purpose of uh, writing unit tests uh, for legacy code if you know that some part of it will be deleted? 
Of course, it is extremely dangerous because you don't know the code. Part of code used, looks unused, but uh, if you have any way of finding it out, of checking it in a, in a development environment, it might be good to just drop the code that looks that and see what happens. Uh, a friend of mine uh, once told me that he, he was give he was in his project there was a thousand line function where there were big chunks of code with uh, with uh, on, under if statements with contradicting uh, with contradicting expressions so uh, there were it was just unreachable code when he cut out of the unreachable code he the result was a hundred line uh, function not a thousand hundred like function is function is still big but it's it's better than thousand okay so how do we prevent having unused code or how do we find it so let's uh, grab the first and, and easiest way so unused imports it is basically a full auto approach there are tools that can help you isort. Isort will not find the unused imports, but it will uh, get rid of, of duplicated in imports and sort everything gently. And Pyflex or Pylint will show the unused imports. So this is not, not a big deal, not a big gain, but it will make your code more clear. And it will be useful for next uh, stay steps. So next step is unused packages. So here we, we we use the previous step because here we will we will take advantage of it. We, for example, there's a simple, uh, no, maybe or maybe not so simple, bash uh, command that extracts all imports from your project, and uh, you can compare it with your requirements file or or setup file, uh, setup file uh, dependencies. Of course, some of the imports will be imports from the standard library so you need to take uh, you need to know it but uh, if you won't won't be able to find your requirements in one of the imports it might mean that it is unused of course there are some packages like uh, development tools which are not imported like pylint or pytest or Py hey, pytest is imported which are or g unicorn which are not imported in your code but still they are used so you need to have some uh, knowledge have some uh, know what you what you have in your in your code base but it will help you to get the um, get the obvious obvious candidates um, okay so unused modules so modules are big animals so it is good it is uh, easy to to track them and we do we do it this just like with packages we see what's imported we can do the same grab us here but just uh, find only things imported from our our uh, project and also we can see code coverage but not only test coverage because coverage module can also track uh, for example th stuff used when you use the site you can run if you have a web app you can run your server with coverage and uh, you do some things and you see what code was uh, was actually run so it's good if you have if you don't have tests, you can uh, use coverage this way. Uh, but also here, as I said in the beginning, modules can be imported in an untrackable way, especially in Django when you have middleware, which are strings, strings with the module path or installed apps. So yeah, you need to think about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so let's let's uh, talk about level advanced. There's a tool call, called Vulture that is uh, that is finding unused code, but it is uh, giving us lots of false positives. As you can see, as you can see here, variable field sets is used by Django admin, not explicitly in the code. This is used automatically found and used by Django or imported in the settings. So there are many uh, problems with it. But uh, for some things like for, for classes uh, or functions, it is the, 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 the findings of Vulture can be, can be helpful. But you always need to think that the Vulture doesn't know everything. It just sees at the code. 
and also it is it is good to, if you run Vulture on your code to ex, uh, exclude the uh, of course tests because even if your code is unused it might still have tests that imports it. Uh, so finding and removing that code is 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 complicated. It's better to just uh, get your code clean. Uh, for example, with classes, clean architecture or hexagonal architecture help, can help you, or using mixins because it's, uh, mixins are won't be used in config files. If you see an unused mixin, it's probably uh, it's probably really unused. Uh, or if you have registered classes or to, or just group classes somehow, it is uh, easier to spot the uh, the unused ones. Uh, about methods, it's, it's pretty much the same. So if you have for methods, it's good to keep the interfaces or, or protocols. Uh, for for functions, you can separate them as uh, as uh, small as as, mm, as much as you can, so that you will see the missing that the missing uh, that the functions are, are are unused on the coverage. And but here you can here and with the Attributes. There is a dyna dynamic access for, for get at on Python, which can uh, prevent us from finding out this. And uh, about attributes, class attributes, it's good to group them into data classes or named tuples, uh, so that it will help us to if we if, if we have to remove something, we have to remove it in one place. And about the variables, PyLink is pretty good with finding out which variables are used and which not. Uh, so to sum up, PyFlakes finds unused imports, MyPy keeps class interfaces, PyLint uh, finds lots of unused stuff, and you can co code coverage, clean architecture, and good practices to help you here. Okay, quick one about duplicated code. Uh, so as you can, as, uh, as I said previously, there's dry and there's wet, so write everything twice. Uh, and sometimes the, the it's good to assume that duplicates start from three uh, because you don't need to uh, always uh, uh, go for the same, always uh, track the, the, the duplicates. Uh, about tools, there are no modern tools that could help you. There is old clone digger, which uh, pretty, is pretty, pretty awesome which, with finding duplicate code. Pilot also find duplicates code, duplicated code, but Pilot findings are exact matches. Clone digger analyzed uh, syntax tree and uh, didn't find, for example, duplicated code with different variable names. Uh, so we are pretty much left alone on this road. We need to write good code, keep the uh, good practices in mind, so that we won't uh, we won't find out after some time that we have lots of duplicated code. Uh, Yes, so we just need to we just need to find out which is which is used where, and uh, do a lot of do a lot of code review, and, and good practices so that it will help us detect any problems. Also, the IDEs I pretty have uh, many ad, uh, extensions that could uh, track the duplicates or unused code. So just check your check if your IDE uh, has anything like that. And that's all from me. Thank you. I had to speed up in the, in the end, but I think I made it. Uh, thank you. And do you have any questions? Yeah, it's time for questions now. Uh, thanks a lot for your talk. Vlad. Well, it was really good. So we have one question, is Vulture a software? Uh, yes, Vulture is a Python package, uh, but also it's a CLI tool. You can okay. install it with pip or with, with your OS package. All right. All right. Right, uh, any other questions? You can pop in the questions in the QA window. Uh, Let's see. Where's the QA window? All right. Uh, we'll wait for uh, a couple of minutes and uh, 
if uh, no one has any questions, you can follow up with Rad in the Microsoft uh, Talk uh, breakout channel. I'm posting the link to the same in the Microsoft Track channel. Okay, thank you. Yep, thanks a lot, Rad. It was a really nice session. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like uh, there's any question coming. Um, huh. Okay, I now see the QA questions. Okay, I'm seeing. Okay, so that's the that says yes. Thank you for uh, uh, for keeping the room. And yeah, so uh, there's a question. Do you oh. have a process to detect dead code? Process. Um, I usually start with Vulcher. And uh, as I said, I start with looking for classes and functions in the Vulture log because it's uh, most uh, most probable that Vulture will detect an um, unused class or function. Um, what to say? And uh, also, if, uh, if the project has some tests, I run the test coverage to see if the um, parts with missing coverage are really used uh, because uh, sometimes it's easy to spot, uh, especially if you have, if you are, if you are me me measuring the branch coverage, if you have branch coverage enabled in the coverage uh, RC file, uh, you can see, if you can see a big branch, which is uncovered, which mean, that means that either the tests never touched it or maybe it is really unused and you can uh, find it. So in most cases, it, it is um, just uh, finding, uh, finding possible places where there, where there is unused code and checking it uh, manually later, verifying it uh, by a human. <laughs> Well, thanks for answering that question. I think that was a really good explanation. Okay, uh, so if no one has any questions, uh, maybe we can conclude this session and uh, you can follow up with uh, Rad in the breakout channel named Talk Decoding uh, Joy of Deleting Code. Uh, I posted the same in the Microsoft channel you can follow on that. Thanks, Red, for joining.